Hooked up. Continuing the Speed Soft Sa series, today we'll be talking about tactical breakdowns, positions, and different roles each player are responsible for. I'll make a separate video for on site shout outs and cover names. But before we start, headline news. Speedsoft Taiwan is officially blessed by SpeedQB, so this means there are discounted products plus freebies for the event. Details later. A few reminders. First, remember to stay tuned at the end for the bloopers and outtakes. Second, the September 6 5v5 event changed its name to Speedsoft Taiwan First Competition. Whoa. Ouch. Ouch. Third, regarding event info, uh, what I share is only meant as a reference. Always double check uh, by calling the organizer yourself to confirm. Thank you. Lastly, go register. Let me break it down to you. Okay, so it's like this. A team of five for 6,000 NT. That's about 1,200 per player. Usual entrance fee for action bunker is $500, right? 400 for membership for four hours of play. Tournament day is a full day, so eight hours. If you sign on in the beginning, this included the three morning sessions of play, uh, four hours each session, so that equals to about $60 per hour of play. Even if you sign up now, you can still catch the last training session. So anyways, this equals out to about uh, $400 per session of play, and that's the same as the membership fee. So remember, all this goes on top of all the perks and a free SpeedQB patch for every participant dude okay plus shipping a SpeedQB patch will equal to like one session of bundle play on serious dude also x Cortac tracer units so for the event they can offer participants a discount of 1380 instead of 1780 on their mark 2 tracer units and that is on top of everything right all the other discounted freebies Finally, a bottle of 500 BLS Green Tracer 0.25 BBs will be given to each player for free every weekend. So that's like three bottles starting this week. So positions, uh, I'll be using speedball terminologies for paintball since that is what SpeedQB is based off of. Uh, there are three main positions. Uh, old school players tend to call them fronts, mids, and backs, while more recent nomenclature are just ones and twos and threes. I've been wanting to find a chance to use the word nomenclature. That's your uh, GRE word of the day. So we OPS tend to go with the old school terms because our call outs will usually include numbers sometimes and that might get confusing. Also, the Chinese translation I'll be using are created by me. So I've never played paintball in Taiwan so I don't know the technical terms for these positions. If you do, or if I made a mistake, or if you have a better name, please share in the comment section below and you know. Remember, these names are just a general reference. Feel free to call them whatever you like, whatever is more suitable for your team. Guacamole, guacamole, bump up, bump up! The front players are the ones that bring the aggression running fast and dives off the brake to cover as much real estate as possible to get the best angles. So fronts tend to get the most kills as they are the sword of a team, you know, trying to probe and flank on the opposition. They need to have a good instinct and fight IQ as they're the vanguard and often behind enemy lines. So most fronts tend to be smaller in stature and fast on their feet. Not all the time, this is just the traditional stereotypical way of uh, perceiving the front. Pistols tend to be the weapon of choice as they're easier to maneuver in tight spaces. So when people think of Speedsoft players stereotypically, fronts are the ones they tend to think of. That's running everywhere, sliding and diving and all that. The front players also include snake players. So every field has a snake, or well, usually should have a snake. Uh, it acts as a highway across the field, keeps the fluidity and the momentum and the movement of both teams possible, so it's not everyone just behind a static cover. Therefore, it is extremely important to have a dedicated player vying for that space. So usually each team will have at least one dedicated snake player, because you control the snake, you control the whole field. The backs are the backbones of the team, the foundation. Off the break, they're the ones spraying right away and trying to lock down lanes, which is called laning. 
So they need to lock down lanes and prevent the opposing front from reaching their cover. So backs are the ones with tons of mags on their belts and their job is to lane and to consistently suppress enemy players. But the most vital job for backs, unlike fronts who jumps into the fray and tries to outmaneuver the opponents, the back is like an anchor. They tend to stay close to the home base, uh, rarely passing the 20. Because of this, the backs tend to get an all-encompassing view of the field and they need to relay the constantly shifting info of the field on both the opposing and the friendly teams to their mates. Also, giving commands for best choice of action every moment. Black one! Black left is it! Black left is What they, what they? What they at, what they at? Snake, snake, snake! Two T, two T! If the field is large, then the backs also need to help relay info from flank to flank, making sure all members are aware of the field dynamics. In many ways, uh, the backs are also the eyes of the team. This is something that I'll get into more in detail next time, like cover names and shoutouts. This in itself is an art to master, not only training yourself to shout, but just as importantly, training yourself to hear. This is something that I'm working on personally as well. So like when you're in the heat of battle, adrenaline pumping, uh, often we get tunnel vision and just go out guns blazing without hearing what your teammates are shouting to you. But when done right for the whole team, these shout outs can act as a mini map in a first person shooter game. Thirsty. Now the mids, there are also positions like floaters and inserts, but I'll group them all together here as one. Uh, to me, the roles are very, very similar. And this is just a very generalized video, so I want to simplify things. The mids act as players between fronts and backs. It's one of the hardest positions as mids need to be very well-rounded uh, when it comes to skill set. Uh, they need to fill in as the front if the front gets taken out or double back and play as a back if the need arises. But needless to say, the mids need to be able to play all positions and change on the fly as the field composition shifts. So for OPS, I play the mid. I can and do run as a front with a pistol when the situation demands it, but I tend to play as a solid mid with my ARP. I'm just more comfortable with it. I'm usually not the guy rushing out and sliding all over the place. Why? Because I'm old. I slide three times and my knees hurt. So stop expecting me to run everywhere every time I go to pick up games. Other players be like, oh, there's new. He's going to run everywhere and slide. Dude, that's not my position. I'm old as <laughs> That's why we OPS leave the legwork for the young folk on our team. I can tell you. I am probably, most likely, 99% the oldest speed soft player on this whole damn island right now. So that's definitely an interesting question. Uh, of course, why not? If you want to, you can try. Um, there are usually no more than two fronts, two mids, and two backs on a team. Now these are the traditional setup. If you want to go out with an all unorthodox team composition, by all means, run with an all front crew if you like. But like basketball, why are there point guards and center and forwards and etc? Can a basketball team run with an all out point guard or all center team? Sure, they can try. So you gotta wonder and ask yourself, why don't they? Personally, uh, I believe a more diversified team roster can allow for a more fluid response to the ever-changing needs of the field. If you become too specialized in one category, you might lack the necessary tool to adapt to change. Okay, time for our sponsor, Fashion Defense. They are located in the south. Uh, I believe they customize and sell accessories for airsoft guns. So I'll be scrolling through here and you can see uh, uh, the type of products they got, feel free to check out their Facebook. I'll include the link in the description below. I plan on cranking out two more videos before the September 6th tournament. One will be a reaction slash translate, uh, translating the highlight video from SpeedQB where Sapo and the KWA guy commentates and chooses best place from their tournament last year. And another video talking about shoutouts. Uh, you know, call signs and all that, uh, cover names. Now, you know the teams need to communicate. What should they be communicating? So I'll try to address that. And of course, if there are any other questions that you want to know, 
uh, just leave a comment below and I'll try to answer them or make a video about them the best I can. And uh, yeah. Wait, 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 before you go, make sure you stay for uh, the bloopers and outtakes. And one more thing. Da -da -da -da! Look at that OPS PVC patch. How beautiful is that? It's like, look at that super quality. It's so detailed, so refined. And wait, wait. I smell champions. <笑>可以拍我鼻孔嗎 Okay。楼下还好吗？哎，对。哎，对，你不是蓝色队的。哎，对。哎，哎，哎，一次就好，一次就好，搞错。哎，你是？我知道在你们后面了。